Good morning, everybody. First, thanks to CIFAR to invite us to present our abstracts and our preliminary results on these studies that we'll be presenting next. So this study is about uh, epidemi is an epidemiologic study to evaluate artemisinin resistance in, in hospitalized patients with severe malaria, malaria with and without HIV in Maputo. So as um, everybody knows, malaria infections continues to be a public health problem with significant morbidity and mortality. There is an estimation on 300, 300 to 500 million people that are infected annually worldwide with one to two million deaths and up to 90% of these case, cases occurring in sub-Saharan Africa. In Mozambique, the burden of disease is staggering as evidenced by malaria counting to something like 27% of hospital deaths and 47% of all deaths in 2009. This is in all over the country, not all in, in Maputo Central Hospital. So the effort on to control the infection depends on two factors, that are, um, the effectiveness of the anti-malaria drugs and increased in, in cytosides against parasites and mosquitoes respectively. The thing is that um, we have uh, regularly campaigned to insecticides, but sometimes it doesn't happen. So we think that this, this is one of the factors that uh, makes the malaria uh, increase in the, net, in the last years in, in Mozambique. And regarding to anti-malaria drugs, we, uh, we, we have been using quinine for uh, many years until 2013, and even that there, there was some resistance from many clinicians to, to move from quinine to to, artem to artemisinin therapies to malaria. So, um, artem resistance to, artem to artemisinin-based therapy has been reported in, in countries like Thailand and Cambodia, and this significant health treat, uh, public health threat, as it is the first line therapy recommended for, by WHO for all the countries who has malaria. Um, a retrospective, retrospective study that was done in the ICU in Maputo Central Hospital showed that there was an increase in mortality in 2012 to 2003 and 2013, sorry, 13 to 14, that was raising the possibility of uh, artemisinin resistance development. This is an unpublished data that we uh, we could collect using the data from the patients that will be uh, hospitalized at ICU. And uh, it's important to say that the artemisinin became the drug of choice from 2013, and at that time at the ICU there were people doing artemisinin or therapy or some people doing on quinine, so we don't know exactly the difference in between the, those groups. So the challenge in defining um, anti-malaria drug resistance is to demonstrate in both in vitro resistance uh, through RT-PCR and in vivo delay of parasite clearance longer than 72 hours. Talking about the malaria and uh, HIV interaction, that was uh, the aim of our, our study. We know that in Mozambique in 2009, estimates show that uh, approximately 2.5 2 million deaths were attributed to malaria and or to HIV infection and these related uh, diseases. Um, we know that in HIV, there are studies showing that in HIV positive, uh, people, they are more likely to have severe malaria and they are more likely to have more episodes and, and, and malaria. So the, an HIV positive patient, is, they are more likely to be associated with increased morbidity and mortality and higher relapse rates following anti-malaria therapy. There is uh, some study that have been done in uh, areas with unstable um, transmission that shows did this, but there is not so many studies doing in the uh, stable transmission area of malaria. So HIV increases the risk of malaria infection when the CD4 count is lower than 500 uh, cells. This is shown by this, the, those other studies that I've shown to you that I, I, I've been talking now. 
And um, it, uh, it says like when we have uh, HIV and malaria at the same time, there is some changes in CD4 count and some changes in uh, viral load that we don't know how long it takes to, to, to change or to recover. This is a prospective study that was done at Maputo Central Hospital in two malaria seasons from in 2011 and from 2012 to 2013. That shows that there was an increased mortality and prolonged parasitemia amongst HIV positive patients compared to HIV negative patients at the ICU and at medicinal wards. So, uh, we have to mention, uh, as I told you before, uh, that anti-malaria using in 2011 and 2013, that some of the study was done at that time. Uh, at that time, the, the, the first line for severe malaria treatment was the quinine. Factors that were associated to this increased mortality in this study in HIV-positive patients included the respiratory distress, anemia, hypoglycemia, liver and renal failure, and high levels, levels of parasitemia. Talking about the study, uh, our primary objective was to determine whether malaria treatment outcomes in hospitalized adult patients differ by HIV study, like comparing two groups, HIV positive and HIV negative patients with uh, diagnosed malaria and uh, to determine whether there is a difference in resistant, resistance rates to artemisine-based regimens amongst adult HIV-positive patients compared to HIV-negative. We don't have this result for the second part. We are still looking for the data, and, and this is our next step, how, as I will uh, explain later on our next steps. So this is our first uh, study schema. Um, we, have, we are enrolling patients. We are still enrolling patients from, that are admitted at Maputo Central Hospital. Our uh, sample size is 100. All the patients have to have diagnosis of malaria by antigen test or by a microscopy test um, that is double checked by the people at the hospital. And we have uh, uh, another microscopist that is checking the, 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 the same samples. Um, And uh, we aim to, to divide, divide those in two groups, one with HIV, the one HIV positive and another one HIV negative, both with malaria, and to see what the outcomes on malaria treatment, looking for mortality um, uh, and other laboratory uh, parameters. And with HIV positive patients, uh, we uh, were expecting to divide in two groups like RTPI based, uh, on PI-based regimen and others with uh, non-PI-based uh, regimen, like people with HIV that were doing, that were on PI and on non-PI because there are studies that showing that there are different um, in performance of clearance of parasitemia. So the inclusion criteria, we enrolled adults uh, more than 18 years that were admitted at ICU and medicine wards at Maputo Central Hospital, which is a quaternary hospital and uh, teaching hospital is the, is the principal referral hospital in all the country with confirmed complicated malaria that are defined by these uh, criteria by WHO. So any patients with this inclusion criteria and one of these um, criteria of complicated malaria were uh, enrolled to this study. So about the results. We have the results of 83 uh, patients now with uh, 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 all the follow-up and they are mostly um, female. We have 46.9% male. The medium age is 43.7, ranging from 18 to 86. The medium parasitemia is 1.29, from 0.2 to 15. And uh, the HIV status at uh, enrollment, we had uh, most of them, they were HIV negative. 
56% uh, of them and 42.1% 42 were HIV positive and seven with a no study. It's important, status is important to mention that nine of these uh, 35 patients were new diagnosed HIV during the, 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 the study. So the CD4 count, the medium CD4 count was 188. 0.5, and all of the patients that were admitted as HIV posit positive, they were on uh, IRVs and they were mostly on NNR TI regimens. Okay. <laughs> uh, talking about the outcomes, uh, the in-hospital mortality comparing both groups, sorry, um, we had like six people that died, six persons died HIV positive and uh, five in HIV negative group with no statistical difference between those group. The 30 day mortalities was um, quite similar between, in between those groups, uh, those two group. Uh, looking for some uh, outcomes that we, some, some parameters that we are trying to look if there is some difference in between those. We are still looking for other many parameters. So the creatinine, the hemoglobin, and the platelets were quite similar in both groups without any um, statistical uh, difference in between the groups. So uh, the other sub that we did, was, it was uh, looking for all the HIV positive patients, the dead and the alive, alive patients looking for the same parameters like creatinine, hemoglobin, and platelets and no difference in between um, both group. Um, so the preliminary conclusions for now is that there was no statistical difference between a significant difference in mortality between HIV and positive and HIV negative individuals admitted with complicated malaria. Uh, the laboratory values, including hemoglobin, creatinine, and platelet could uh, count, didn't, did not differ uh, between HIV or HIV positive, HIV positive or negative patient. There was no statistically difference in laboratory value observed in HIV positive who survived or died during hospitalization or at 30 day follow up. And uh, there was no prolonged paracetamol in either HIV positive or HIV negative uh, subgroup defined by the presence of parasite for at 70 hour, uh, 72 hours after initiation of antimalaria therapy. As I said, we didn't make uh, at, uh, to now the genetic analysis. So our next steps, just to finalize, uh, analyze full data set and determine whether there is an, any statistical difference uh, in primary and secondary outcomes between those uh, two groups, determine whether the difference in HIV antiretroviral regimen in HIV positive uh, individuals impact initial degree of parasitemia, persistence of parasitemia at seven to hour or mortality rates, and uh, uh, art resistance, SIS, and genetic characterization, characterization of malaria will be done for all the patients who died during the hospitalization and or, or 30 days follow up. Thank you. So, thank you so much, uh, Lucia. That was a very nice presentation and the session is open for questions. If you have a question, you can walk to the microphone in the middle of the aisle. That's easier. We just figured it out <laughs> or here. <laughs> Hi, Lucia. Um, I was just wondering, you had mentioned that the time period um, spanned the introduction of artemisin-based therapy, and were you going to look at a comparison um, for quinine versus artemisin-based therapy in your severe patients? Um, no, actually all of these patients were on artemisine because we are doing this study, this study now and quinine, we, just, we stopped using quinine in 2013. We are just using for pregnant women or in relapsed case or, or patients that we see that we, they don't respond to artemisine therapy. So we don't have this. Actually, we didn't have any patients on quinine. Thank you. And if I may, one more question. Um, uh, it, it, it looked like everybody in your study was very severely ill because that was part of your criteria for inclusion. Um, 
have have you ha, has the hospital seen that um, people with HIV or people who are HIV positive tend to be more likely to have severe disease, severe malaria, or not? Is that not the case? Not exactly. As we see, like uh, we have like same. Uh, we didn't have any difference in between the groups, so it looks like they have the same characteristics. Like the patients that comes with severe malaria, they have the same characteristics, both HIV negative and HIV positive. Maybe there is some other factor that uh, um, influence the, the severity of malaria in both groups. Hi, thank you, very interesting presentation. I had a couple of questions. First of all, maybe there's a trend at 83, and when you get to your 100 with your power calculation, you might see something. Um, secondly, you've got the CD4 counts coming in with them. Uh, was it high CD4 count? It was like 504? And people were supposed to be all on therapy, but there was quite low CD4 counts, you know, 100. Are these people actually taking their meds, do you think? That is uh, uh, one of, of our concerns, is that maybe some of these patients, they are in failure. The population that are going to the hospital at the last years, uh, we don't have many people that we knew diagnosed with HIV, HIV now, but we have people that are on treatment, but they are on failure of, of HIV. Maybe they are don't taking the medication, or maybe there is some other factors like pharmacokinetics or some problem with NNRTIs that. Uh, yes. Do you have viral loads on those people? No, we don't have okay. because uh, we uh, we didn't add any tests either than the 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 doctors uh, were, uh, were adding, and we don't do the viral load routinely at Maputo Central Hospital. We only do the viral load for people that are suspected on failure, and this is doing at the primary care, not exactly at Maputo Central Hospital. Really, okay, so that's, the other thing I was gonna ask you was, um, how many of these people who are really sick with malaria are coming in from the rural areas? And I mean, I know that Maputo is pretty dense. Yes but um, you don't have a very high malaria incidence in central Maputo, right? Some of the people, most of the people that we, we didn't show this analysis, many of the people, they were coming from Matola. Matola is close to Maputo, but uh, they have uh, rivers and the control of parasites is quite different from in Maputo uh, city, but we still have some cases from Maputo city that maybe they are because of water uh, problem or something like that. But we have both people coming from rural area and from, from Maputo city. Well, it's very interesting, great work, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any more question for Lucia? Yes. Did you record uh, among the HIV patients uh, how many of them had been on cotrimoxazole prophylaxis and were there clinical course is different? Um, we did have this data, we didn't analyze yet, but most of the patients, uh, they were on cotrimoxazole, but th this will be one of the secondary analysis that we'll, we'll, going to, we're going to do. We asked that on our questionnaire, if they were on cotrimoxazole, as we know that is some of ways of pre prevention of malaria. Any more questions? Can I ask you one question? So what about the uh, severe case uh, of malaria in the HIV negative population? Because of course, like it makes sense that HIV positive would have uh, more severe malaria. But do you think there is an underground reason why uh, in Maputo, HIV negative people end up having as much severe malaria as HIV positives? Um, there is some other factors that we have to, to look for, and one of them is that there are some other factors that can affect, like the nutritional status and um, delay of going on going to the hospital, the distance in between their houses to the hospital, because as you see, many of the patients, they were on severe malaria, and most of these patients, they only can be treated at Maputo Central Hospital. It's the only place where we have uh, a real ICU where we can intubate the patients doing ventilation like some of these patients had to do. So there are some other factors that we need to look for either than uh, HIV status as, as we didn't see any difference till now. Well, thank you very much, Lucia. That was great.